I'm going to talk a little bit about equivalent fractions, but before I do that, let's just remind ourselves on what a fraction is. I guess a fraction can be described as a part or a piece of a whole amount. Here I have 100 grams, that could be a fraction of the larger one kilogram. One pound could be described as a fraction of 10 pounds. Just as all the picture cards in a full deck could be described as a fraction of that full deck. So, I have a couple of examples of equivalent fractions to show you. If we take a basic circle, which I've divided into eight equal parts, it is divided into eighths. If I was to shade in two of those eight parts, I've actually shaded in two eighths. And I've actually shown those in slightly different colours. Now, if you squint a little bit at the screen, you should see that the two colours blend in together. And from that, you should be able to see that it is actually the same as one quarter. I've not changed how much I have, I've just expressed it in a different way. So two eighths, we can see, is the same as one quarter. It doesn't just apply to circles. Here I have a large square, which I've divided into 16 equal parts, into sixteenths. Again, I've shaded in a number of them. In fact, I've shaded in 12 of these 16 parts, so my fraction that is shaded is 12 sixteenths. And again, I've used two colours which are very similar. Now, if you, again, you squint at the screen a little bit, take a step back and squint at the screen, you might look a little bit daft. If you now look properly, you should see it's the equivalent of three quarters. So why do we do this in the first place? Well, if I use an example of 17 over 51, that's a horrible looking fraction. And I really can't picture that in my mind at all. However, believe it or not, that is the equivalent fraction of one third. Which is a lot easier for me to understand and actually use in my mathematics. I can picture that in my mind much easier than I can 17 over 51. We know why we use equivalent fractions. And the next question is how do we actually do this? Well, if we take the example from before of 12 sixteenths, I know the equivalent fraction to that was actually three quarters, but how do I get there? Well, the simple answer is I need to find a number which we're going to both the numerator and the denominator. It's worth actually starting with the numerator itself. Will that go into itself? Yes, of course it will. It will go once, but it will not go into 16, so I can't use 12. I could try 6. Again, 6 will go into the numerator, but it will not go into 16. In fact, 4 is the largest number which we're going to both 12 and 16, and it's that number that I'm going to use. Now, I must do the same to the top as to the bottom to give me an equivalent fraction. So I'm going to divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So I must do the same to the bottom. 16 divided by 4 is 4. And that is my equivalent fraction. It's much easier to use 3 quarters as opposed to 12 sixteenths. Let's try a trickier example now. Let's say 34 over 102. That is a horrible looking fraction and I can't really picture that in my mind. So I'm going to use an equivalent fraction to help me understand how much that is. I need to find a number which will go into both 34 and 102. Well actually I know 17 goes into that so I'm going to try 17. It does indeed go into 102. So, 34 divided by 17 is equal to 2, and 17 into 102, now I can use a calculator, is actually 6. But hang on, is that in lowest terms? I know 2 will actually go into 6, so I could do it again. 2 divided by 2, remembering to do the same to the bottom as well, 6 divided by 2, and that is equal, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So in actual fact, 34 over 102, much easier to understand as one third. And I hope that helps.